Hello everybody! Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome one and all. Let's start this literary adventure back up again. So we've done a couple of things. We've gotten that uh, rare book traded for an even rarer book. Uh, we have a new friend, well, well, a new person we have talked to. He may be a friend, he may be an enemy, he may be a frenemy. He may be a... Yeah, and... Anyway, first things first, as long as we have the jolly music playing, let's take a look at the book that we got from Ali. Alexander is carrying a book from the bookshop. The cover says, Ye Old Spell Book. Hmm, a lot of vowels in there. Now we need... Every single one of these, but unfortunately no spell to make teddy bears. Magic paint spell, swamp ooze, river sticks water, and a black horse feather. Well, thank God that these reagents are easy to come by. Speaking the incantation would do little good unless there were a painted object nearby to enchant. Hmm, okay. There's a make rain spell, which you have when you have a bunch of ones in your pocket. A few drops of salt water, not from the sea. Interesting. One vial of sacred water and falling water. Alrighty, interesting. This spell must be cast over a teapot containing salt water, sacred water, and falling water. Wow, he really does love to pronounce these T's really hard. Water. Salt water. Sacred water. It's a really specific spell that you need a teapot for, but I think we have one now. No, we have a hunter's lamp. Oh, speaking of, we can trade that in maybe for uh, a new lamp from the guy outside. Yeah, we'll do that while we're here. Charming, a creature of the night. Okay, one skull full of hot embers, brimstone, and a strand of pure-hearted maiden's hair. This spell must be cast over a skull containing hot embers, a strand of hair, and brimstone sulfur. This is the last page. Oh, I thought there were more spells than that. All right, so we have three spells that we have. Creature of the night, make it rain, and the magic paint this spell. Is the Got it. Well, we can't do any of these things now, but I think I do have... The black horse feather, and that's pretty much it. So if we ever come across a skull, at least we know what to do with it. All right, my little jolly friend. Hello. Good day, sir. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? You're interrupting me. I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. Oh, are you too worried about the princess? Oh, goodness, let's have a cup of tea. Merry on birthday to you. Excuse me again, sir. You mentioned the princess. I told you I'm not interested in talking to strangers. Yes, I'm much too busy here doing important things, reading a book on the history of clowning through the ages. All right, so we're just a stranger, so we need to prove ourselves to him. Unfortunately, the only form of identification in the entire land of the Green Isles was my little signet ring, which I kind of traded away for a magic map. Oh, the... Uh, the guy's not here. All right. Well, we've been around the world, and by world, I mean the adjoining four islands, and maybe we picked up something valuable enough to trade back for my ring? How about this pearl? The flawless pearl is the largest Alexander's ever seen. Hmm. Lucky for us. Okay, let's see if Pawn Man will take that. I forgot his name. Does he have a name? Good day, Prince Alexander. I forgot. Nope, he is credited just as pawn shop owner. That's a real shame, because the other guy is named Ollie, and we get sort of connected with all the other creatures, but... Creatures? No, people. That's what they are. All right, as tradition dictates, let's take a look at uh, some more items on the wall here. Let's take on the back wall here. How about this axe? The pawn shop is at... The pawn... The pawn shop is at... No, the axe doesn't exist. All right, uh, back shelf. The back wall of the shop holds various odds and ends. For example... A hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. Cat cookie mix. Play tricks on your friends, the box says. Man, that could have saved me so much time and effort. A golden bridle finder for finding those nearly invisible golden bridles. Oh, these are all references for things that would have been super, super handy in the past installments. There was the hard to find holes in the sailboats from King's Quest V. The cat cookie from three, and I forgot what it just said, the bridle, which I think was King's Quest two? Yeah, two. What was it, one? No, it was two. Self-adhesive emeralds, what you use when you don't have honey. That's an obtuse one. Tongue climbing gear, tested on over <laughs> 100 whale tongues. Oh, boy, that's really on the nose. 
a uvula tickler, guaranteed to make large mammals sneeze. A cheese hook for retrieving cheese out of small holes. That seems like too specific a novelty. That would not have passed the marketing department. A shovel that's guaranteed not to break for over 100 grave diggings. King's Quest IV, I believe. A bridge repair kit for when you've crossed a bridge one too many times. The most annoying thing about King's Quest II is that if you go back and forth across the bridge that you need to cross anyway, more than absolutely necessary, you die. Stair traction pads. Stop slipping off those narrow staircases. <laughs> King's Quest IV, for sure. A hole hold it. Oh, okay, and that's all that's back there. Oh, that was fun. I never read half of that stuff. Cat cookie. Is this all the same thing? A gold self. Yeah, everything on the back wall is that. Tongue climb. Oh, well, that's a shame. All right, next time we'll take a look at that back wall. But for now, hello, shopkeeper. How fare you, good merchant? I cannot complain. I hope your travels are treating you well, Prince Alex. Alex, your inflection is weird. All right, will you take my shiny little pearl? I really want my ring back. You haven't melted it down already, have you? I dare say the bear has a monocle. Real estate. I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my family ring? I have oh, never no. seen such a perfect pearl. <laughs> Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. Excellent. All right, we got our ring back. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family of Daventry on its face. I've always kind of grown attached to this ring because it looks just like those cheap little rings you get out of the little quarter machines in the grocery stores and the eggs, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it looks just like those and it just fills me with a sense of whimsy and nostalgia. But pretty much everything fills me with a sense of whimsy and nostalgia, so nothing special. Where did he go? I, I finally get a lamp and he scarpers off. Uh, Good day again. Um... Okay, well, he's come and gone quickly. Good. Well, interestingly, um, now he just disappeared. I can't get him to come back. Well, that was a colossal waste of time, but I believe he'll be back. He just kind of shows up whenever, and then we can talk to him. But uh, first things first. Volumes of poetry are on display on this bookshelf. And uh, poetry is important because we're a man in love and poetry, of course, is the only way to anyone's heart. Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Ugh. Not bad. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care. Where shadow they her earthly bed, oh, that she were not there. Does that mean she's dead? Yikes. And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me and made me powerless to flee? What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? The name of love cannot apply. Its commonness does not decry the haunted, hunted, painful cry that my heart makes for you, that e'er my soul eternal makes for you. That's really cheesy. Mm. A little close to home, that one. Alexander returns the love poem book to the shelf. Whoops. Your book broke. A page has fallen from the poem book and now lies on the floor. Mine? Alexander picks up the fallen page. It's the love poem he particularly liked. It must have fallen out of the poetry book. I see that old volume has lost another page. You may keep it if you like, sir. 
I have glued the stubborn thing back in place two times already. I do rather like it. Thank you, merchant. I thought I remembered that you could, just as a little bonus, I don't think it got points for it, but you could show him the page and then you would have that little exchange. It's like, oh, thank you for being so honest, so you can keep it. Uh, where is it? Oh, that's right, I have two pages now. Hey, Roddy Tomato! Alexander has a love poem from a book in the bookshop. Don't read it again. Thank you. Now then, now then. Oh, look at the flat top on you, my friend. Whoa. Was it kid or play that had the uh, haircut like that? I think it was play. <laughs> oh, there's a haircut you can set your watch to. Oh, and me and the bird have matching haircuts now. This is fantastic. Love it. Okay. Now, this bird does have something important to do. And I believe what you do or do not do with this bird has a big effect on the ending that you get. So the first thing we have to do, now, now, I, I think we've learned somewhere down the line, but this bird belongs to Cosima. Uh, I don't know if you've ever gotten that hint before. So we can give the bird a few things and he'll fly over to Cosima and then bring them back. Now, the order in which you give things to the bird is, makes all the difference in the world because we can send her things like the love poem or things like that. But if she doesn't know who it's from, things go all wrong. I'll give you an example. So let's send her the love poem. Let her know that we love her and she's loved. She has an admirer out there in the world. Alexander holds out the poem to the nightingale. You know, Snaky McLintock came on down. To Alexander's surprise, the nightingale swoops down and grabs the page from his hand. The nightingale flies off towards the castle with the poem. Where might she be taking it? She's gonna put it in her nest, you fool. Uh. I, I, I thought we got a cutscene here. Um. Okay, I think my game is broken. Um, hang on a sec. Okay, I, I, I think, I don't think my game is broken, but I think I am getting ahead of myself here because since we don't know that uh, Sing Sing belongs to Kasim yet, because I think that information comes from another source, that the game is sort of being like, no, 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 one thing at a time, big guy. Priority number one right now is to get ourselves ready to face the catacombs up on the island of the Sacred Mountain, which we cannot go anymore until we have everything we need, because if we go back, whether we have everything or not, we are tossed right in. Well, the, no, I think if you climb the cliffs, then you're tossed in, but I think you're allowed to go to the beach. Let's test this theory. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. In my pants. Okay, no, we're safe here. No problem. So as long as you don't climb the cliffs, and I think the game just skips you right up there, we should be fine. We can't do anything else on the Island of the Beast right now until we finish the Sacred Mountain. So let's go over and finish up what needs to be done on the Isle of Wonder. Alexander feels a... Alexander. And we're headed over to the uh, the garden over here, but someone in the comments mentioned that I'm supposed to talk to the cat of nine tails, and that I've been very lax, by the way, as many of you mentioned, talking to everything that needs to be talked to. So uh, let's take care of that right now. Good day, thou most feline of fronds. I never knew they did that. My dear tree. Is it true that your bark is worse than your bite? The log itself has nothing to say. The log itself has not. The swamp gurgles. Alexander sees no point in trying to talk to that stick in the swamp. Interestingly enough, he moves into position like he does. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Didn't my book of spells say I need a cup of swamp ooze? Well, I'm not sure where I'm going to get river sticks water, but hey, maybe there's a substitute. So let's go ahead and get that swamp ooze. Alexander doesn't want to put his bare hands in that oozy swamp. Mm. Okay, well, I need a cup in which to do so. Oh, that's what that chair is for. A teacup appears there. That's its only purpose in life. A delicate china teacup is occupying the chair at the moment. Alexander says to no one in particular. What a pleasant garden this is. The inhabitants smile shyly, but do not reply. Hmm. All right, cup is mine. 
Alexander takes the teacup. Now, here's another one of my favorite little moments in the game. A lot of the, my favorite moments in this game are musical, and my, my favorite favorite comes up a little bit later. But uh, in order to get the wallflowers to move out of the way so we can get hole in the wall over here, we got to kind of break them out of their shell a little bit. So let's have party. May I have this dance? I love how the snapdragons add percussion, but who's playing the piano? Alexander stops playing the flute, but the wallflowers and snapdragons continue to dance, caught up in the music and oblivious to everything around them. Perfect, that's my chance. Aha. While the wallflowers dance, Alexander snatches the hole in the wall. Perfection. And I think they'll just keep dancing. Never mind, they stopped. Good day, tomato vines. Good morning. <laughs> All right, so now that we have the cup, let's go ahead and get the swamp ooze that we need so we can get that out of the way. What do you think you're hey. doing? Is everybody swamp? You startled me. I was just getting some swamp ooze. Well, you certainly won't get it there! That's not swamp ooze! That's swamp slime! He's right, you know. But he could be a little nicer about telling you. Boop. He's not a very pleasant stick in the mud. Nobody asked you! Be quiet! <gasps> oh, the trials of being a mirror. Bump on a log. I adore Bump on a Log and Stick in the Mud. They're some of my favorite characters in the game. Oh, you really won't make any progress that way. He'll hog that swamp booze of his. You'll never see a bit of it, no. No. I'll show you a bit of it! I'll knock your head off with it if you don't stop yapping! You see how he is? All right, so now what we have to do is we have to has, we actually have to escalate tensions between bump on a log and the stick in the mud. Who are you? I'm bump on a log, and that's my brother, stick in the mud. Boop. We've had this thing about each other ever since our childhood. Mom always liked me best. She did not! That is absolutely not true! He's a bit lazy, you see. He's got the only swamp ooze in the swamp right next to him. But do you think he'd move a finger to help you get some? Hardly. He'd try to brain you with it more than likely. His temper's about the only thing that ever gets a workout. And that on yours truly. Oh! Like you've moved it all in the last century! Like you're Mr. Physical Activity! <laughs> Just because I can't reach anything, he thinks he can throw gushy swamp matter at me and just say whatever he likes. If only I could turn the tables on that heckler, he might learn some respect. But as you can see, I'm a mere bump on a log and must be content with my lot. Oh, shut up! You couldn't hit the broadside of a barn even if you had something to throw! Just shut up! You see how he is? First, um, I have a question about who the parents of these two things are. Who could give birth to a lump of... It's a fantasy game. Perhaps you could toss me some swamp ooze, since you seem to be able to recognize it. I can only reach this bit by the path. Well, hoity-toity, look who's Mr. Want so much! You think I got a job here passing around precious swamp matter? You should be so lucky! He's an utter waste of oxygen. I'd save my breath if I were you. But really, I... Never! I got your swamp ooze right next to me, and that's where it's gonna stay! This swamp ooze is mine! P 
Period. Period. Alexander isn't getting anywhere by talking to that cranky stick in the mud. The creature simply refuses to toss Alexander any swamp ooze. Hmm. Is there anything I can do to make peace between you two? You are brothers, after all. He needs a good thrashing, I expect. Huh? However, since you cannot go into the swamp, nor can I fight back, he will simply have to be born. Such is the life of a bump on a log. Is there anything I can do for you, bump on a log? Oh, there's no changing my lot in life. Mm -hmm. A bump on a log is a defenseless creature, alas, and must put up with whatever cruelty fate dishes out. Oh, your nihilism is depressing, my poor little bump on a log. But if you're looking for a weapon, what does one toss at hecklers, I might ask? Why, a rotten tomato, of course. There's no reason to leave that lying about on a log. I, no, I want to give it to the bump on a log. There's no reason. I thought this might come in handy the next time your brother starts picking on you. Aha! Finally, old bump on the logs, not so defenseless. This rotten tomato has magically given me arms. Hey, hey! What are you doing there? Watch the pulp, would you? Now, Bumpy, remember all I've given you. The only thing you've ever given me is mud. Take this. No! Not into the swamp! Watch, well, he has one shot and he misses. Hey, okay. I give up. Jeez, sorry. Well, I guess it's not very pleasant having things thrown at you. I'm sorry. You mean it? Really? Brother? Brother! Stick in the mud and bump on a log, exhausted from the battle, immediately doze off into naps. Rotten Tomato, being equally lazy, decides to join them. <sighs> All right, and I think that's the last we ever hear from Stick in the Mud, Bump on a Log, and sadly, Rotten Tomato. How are you finding your new surroundings, Rotten... Uh, uh, Mr. Tomato? Can't you see I'm snoozing? All right, you're done good. Now, go play in the street or something. Yeah. <laughs> Rotten Tomato seems to enjoy this smelly, mucky swamp. He's napping next to his new partner in crime, Stick in the Mud. Stick in the mud has gone into a delicious snooze. Delicious snooze. A glob of swamp ooze tossed during the brotherly fight has landed on the log. I also feel bad that he doesn't really offer to clean him up all the way. He just sort of takes what he needs and leaves. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. One teacup of swamp ooze, please. Alexander fills the teacup with the swamp ooze. Check and check. And I think I remember why the uh, the teapot salesman guy is not showing up right now because you actually need the teapot and if you or the uh, the hunter's lamp rather. And if you were to give it away now, then that would put the game in an unwinnable state. And King's Quest Six is too good for that. King's Quest Six is too good for all of us. Okay, so that's going to be a nice teapot analog for the make rain spell. So we need a few drops of salt water, not from the sea, sacred water and falling water. Um, this is what I remember. Salt water, uh, in every single game, if you ever need salt water, it's always crocodile tears from the Kyrandia book of things. But barring any crocodiles, the only thing I've ever seen cry are these little babies. So here you go. Here's some really warm milk that's been in my pocket for the last couple of days. Alexander gives one of the baby's tears a bottle of milk. The other baby's tears seem to resent Alexander's gift for some reason. I don't know why we always favor this top baby. Why do we ever give something to the other babies? Anyway, so let's fill up the lamp with this saltwater tears. Alexander collects some of the baby's tears in the old hunter's lamp. Baby's tears. Tears, thank you very much. Oh, God, get away from that sound. I'm a father. Do not want. All right, that was a pretty productive visit. Let's go see if Jalo's come back. Nope, still no Jalo, but I think, um, 
there's no particular rush on talking to him anyway. I think we have pretty much everything I need to survive the catacombs at this point, save for one thing from the pawn shop, which I couldn't do before because I needed the flute for the wallflowers. And while we're here, let's see what's on the back shelf. The back wall of the shop holds various bottles and potions. For example, a bottle labeled Owl Courage Potion for spineless owls. Uh, we're gonna do this again, are we? A bottle of Gnome Be Gone. That would have been handy in King's Quest 2. Miniature Carpet Cleaner for those castles in a bottle. That's King's Quest 5 reference. Bird's Nest Soup Mix, treasure not included. Oh, wow, 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 wow. King's Quest 1, I think? Garlic, especially grown for vampire resilience. In the remake of King's Quest 2, there was a vampire quest line, which is really, really good. The, the remake of King's Quest 2 is fantastic. No, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 there were there was vampires in King's Quest 2. I think you had to... Or was it 4? I don't remember. I'm No, 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 I think it was 2. It was the castle in the, uh, in the, in the lake. Magic Mirror Glass Cleaner for when your future looks fuzzy. That's probably a quote from one of the games, but too obtuse for me. Shark repellent. That's a Batman reference. No, wait, 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 no, no. King's Quest 4. King's Quest 4. A small box of enchanted sorcerer's flea and tick collars. Yeah, that's a King's Quest 3 reference. That would be from Mananen. A bottle of no. Oh, okay, okay. All right, that was that was fun. I like that. Now, we won't need the paintbrush uh, until much later um, for when we have the magic paint spell. And even so, it's pretty situational. But what we actually need to survive in the catacombs is the tinderbox and the cave. Uh, up there, that was too dark, by the way. I believe I'll take the tinderbox. Very good, Prince Alex. Enjoy your tinderbox and bring it back anytime. Thank you. I don't know how you're supposed to turn a profit just by... Uh, whatever. Lending library. The tinderbox contains a candle as well as some flint and tinder. All right, I got kind of worried for a second because I thought you used the tinderbox to light the hunter's lamp and put stuff in there and that's what glows. But no, it looks like this is self-sustaining. Alright, and with any luck, I think we have everything we need to survive the catacombs, if not, uh, adventure time. Hi, gentlemen. Care to throw me to my death? So, you have chosen to come back and face the catacombs when you could have escaped. Uh -huh. I admit I am surprised. You are either a complete idiot, or vain enough to think yourself invincible. Bink. Aww. I'll follow you. And you are far wiser, I suppose, to leave a maiden to die? To not fight this plague on your own people? Bravery and suicide are two different things, oh, human. To me, you will Dave. have a chance to renounce your choice soon enough, when you lay trembling under the Minotaur's hooves. We shall see. Thanks for the escort. We only escort you to your death. May the fates make it quick so that you do not have to scream long. You guys have no faith in me! Oh, oh boy, oh boy. The catacomb's entrance door is locked from the outside by the winged one's guards. It seems that leaving the catacombs by that door is not an option. All right, welcome to hell. So, the catacombs are full of traps, and I think... Uh, the catacombs is the one place where you can really put yourself in an unwinnable state because if you save in here and don't have everything that you need, then that game file is a complete wipe. So save often, save in multiple different save spots because if you ever get yourself in a spot like this, you're screwed. Okay, so we'll figure out our way through here next time. I'm not looking forward to this because I don't really remember my way through, but I'm going to do my best. So until then... Good night, jelly beans. Good night.